you've, um, mm. you, you've told me that, um, you know, you, you've stated that you study topics of being leaders and encourage encouragers as Christians in this fallen world. Um, and our goal is to build up strong warriors for Christ. Can you kind of explain that? Yeah, so, you know, we live in this fallen world, and um, what that refers to, it's a world which has kind of devolved into Satan's ways. And um, so the symptoms of a fallen world are division, anxiety, fear, um, you know, and the like. And so and we see that throughout our our. our our world, and then I guess you got to throw in selfishness, self-seeking, and pride, and so that kind of defines the world. You know, people are out there, you know, seeking for self, um, mm -hmm. and they're falling into all kinds of traps um, that revolve around the flesh's desires and lust. So, a Christian leader, um, you know, in the fallen world, doesn't compromise the commandments of God and lives under the authority of God in every area of their life. Um, and we're not really called to change the world. Only God can change the world. I mean, when you look at the com the complex forces involved in politics and in in leadership, the you know the establishments, the church, and all of that, uh, it is confusing. And uh, the, there's too many agendas. Uh, too many are hidden um, for any one man to make a lasting impact on changing the world. We're called to live in freedom found in Christ and to offer that to other people. Um, you know, God will bring down the evil plans of Satan and his, and his people on earth. My role is to speak truth into the world. Um, and it's God's word, uh, it's not mine. And um, because it's God's word, it has the power to convict and change people. Mm. And by changing people, uh, changing the hearts of men and women in the world, um, we can have a significant impact on the lives of many, many people. Um, but we probably will never create heaven on earth, right? I mean, right, right. That we're not going to do that. Um, so, um, you know, a warrior stands strong um, behind Christ. Um, and I think that God. Jesus points us each to probably unique battlefields. Mm -hmm. And um, and if you're going to be in a battle, uh, you don't want to be looking around at all the battle skirmishes that are going around. You want to stay focused on yours. And so I always envision myself as walking behind Christ um, and uh, all armored up, you know, in Ephesians 6 and ready to go. And right. um you know, I don't, I don't worry about it though, because I'm, I'm being led by Jesus. Right. So right. So we're I'm confident. What? Um. So yeah, obviously we're not going to get heaven on earth until Jesus comes back. Um. Should so I, I guess in your opinion, should should we even strive to make it that way, or just kind of let things be things, let the chips fall where they may, so to speak. Well, 2 Corinthians um, 5.19 says that we've been called to a ministry of reconciliation. So Jesus came to reconcile the world to himself. Um, mm. And he desires that none of the people should perish and fall. Um, and so he commissioned us to go into that and to be part of that reconciliation. So... Um, yeah, I, I mean, I look at things like I look at the school board issues and, you know, I'm mm -hmm. like all about I'm just um, cheering on the people that are getting involved in, in, in that battle and what they teach our children in the public schools um, and the private right. schools sometimes too. And, right. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, again, Christ will, will point out where we can have our impact and, and sometimes it's one-on-one -on -one. sometimes it's institutional um so it just depends right